First, I want to introduce you to Chloe Johnson. What Chloe Johnson really wanted to do in her life was become a veterinarian. She decided that she would go off to a technical college. Chloe's expected family contribution was $2,520. That's the amount of money that the FAFSA deems your family is able to contribute when you go to college. Her net price was over $12,000 a year. She got a partial Pell Grant. When the Pell Grant was created, it was intended to cover 100% of the cost of attending college. Her net price is 49% of her family's income for a single year. Her grades weren't up to par. This was hard because I was sleeping in a lot of my classes to try and catch up with sleep. It was a combination of stress and driving and trying to hold down two jobs just so that I could afford everything on a day-to-day -day basis. Today, Chloe is now still serving in the military but she's still trying to pay off her debt and does not have a college degree. Pell Grant recipients were never supposed to have debt. It's why we created the Pell. So let's ask ourselves, what would happen if we give out more grant aid? The Wisconsin Scholars Longitudinal Study, which I started with my team, began with the very first ever randomized controlled trial of need-based aid. What this program aimed to do was to offer students some money. What they wanted to do was really focus on improving students' graduation rates rather than students' enrollment rates. When we looked at bachelor's degree completion rates on time, we saw a statistically significant increase from an average of 16% to 21%. We found many factors that appear to be really reducing the potential impacts of this program. When they took loans and the new scholarship comes in, there isn't enough room in their financial aid package to accommodate it. In order, therefore, to give them the grant, somebody had to take away some of their loans. They had a hard time holding on to this grant. Good news, my dad finally got a job. We're paying down the debt that the families accrued. Bad news, I lost my Pell Grant. When students are struggling in college, the number one way they try to get their GPA up is to take, more, uh, take fewer classes. When you take fewer classes, you drop below full-time status. You also lose your Pell Grant. What about work-study? The problem with this program is that it is dramatically underfunded. When we eventually, last year, got out there with a national survey at 10 community colleges around the country, of the 4,000 students who did answer our surveys, one in five is classified as hungry, and 13% were homeless. The FAFSA focuses on tuition and not living costs. The politicians do too. The FAFSA presumes parental support that as I am showing you is often absent and in fact misguided in the first place. It assumes that loans are optional. It doesn't resource the colleges to support students like those that I've just described. Inadequate uh, financing, I'd argue, is now part of the college completion problem. Only 14% completed a bachelor's degree within four years and 55% of those who dropped out of college had debt and no degree. We need to put out accurate costs of attendance. We need to improve the work-study program. We could do that tomorrow. We can coordinate benefits access so that, for example, living in low-income housing does not conflict with being enrolled in college. We don't do any of the sorts of waiver programs that we've done in other social programs to try to improve them. And I argue that it is time for universal, free, public higher education. I believe the message is important. If we could generate a broader base of support for making public higher education affordable, that we would have more people tied into that system. And when it took cuts, it would be like Social Security, untouchable. I believe that instead of targeting students based on income, we should target based on the level of education. So I've made a proposal with my colleague Nancy Kendall to make the first two years of public higher education free. I believe it's the place to start. It's time to make college affordable.